Good morning, Teach Better family, and welcome. It is a Teach Better today. I'm Katie Miglin, and I'm with Joshua Stamper, and we are starting your morning where we start every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on all your social media platforms. We are here to hopefully have some good conversation, drop some nuggets of information, get you kind of thinking whether you're getting ready in the morning or if you're driving to work. Maybe you're just sitting, drinking some coffee, whatever it is. We are here to kind of just be a part of your day and we're glad you're joining us. So if you're joining us in the comments, drop your name, where you're at, and uh, what's your drink of choice for this morning? All drinks are available. Protein shakes, orange juice, apple juice, coffee, mimosa, whatever floats your boat. Ooh. And we'll be back in just about 30 seconds. <laughs> Good morning, Teach Better community. Whether you're joining us in the comments, whether you're listening to our podcast, we are so excited that you have made us a part of your day. I'm Katie Miglin, and this is the famous, wonderful Joshua Stamper. Josh, good morning. Good morning. You said mimosas, and now all I can think about is having one. I know. I know. <laughs> it Why sounds so good that? right now. It does sound know. so good. Or Bloody Marys, if some people are yeah. Bloody Mary people, you know, I think that's kind of like a salad in a cup, but you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, whether, wherever you're joining us, whatever you're doing, thanks for joining us today on Teach Better Today. I'm excited because we don't get to record very often. So true. apparently we didn't mess it up too bad the other day that they let us do it again. Or maybe we did and no one said anything. That eh, could be. Yep. That's possible. <laughs> whatever. Um, okay, so Josh, I, I I mean, I know we have like education stuff to get into and there's like, you know, yes. real things that we'll discuss, but I have, I've realized that people on our team, some people are big readers and some people are not. And one thing I don't know about you is where you fall on the spectrum of reading, like with your eyes and text. I enjoy it. Okay. I like to partake in it when I can. Okay. But it typically doesn't happen in large quantities unless I'm on vacation. Just okay. due to the amount of people in my household. Which, in case you weren't sure, Joshua Samper lives in a very busy house. The last <laughs> I have a small fleet, yes. Yes, he may or may not be trying to create a football team. He's surpassed the basketball team. Although, yep. if you have a basketball team, you have subs. So, you've managed True. that, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So then follow up question. You're a fan of reading, but what do you read? Like what's your genre of choice? And so what do you lean on? Uh, probably more like fantasy, sci-fi, mm -hmm. futuristic type of stuff. Okay. I think it'd be on that. Like Scythe or like Ready yeah. Player One, you know, that, that kind yeah. of. Yeah. I've read both. I uh, read Scythe, not Ready yeah. Player One. Yeah. Already player two is there's a sequel, but you yes. know, like stuff yes. like that. It's it's more <laughs> escape into some other world, you know, have have some fun. Uh of course I, I have educational books that I read all the time. Right. Uh but if I'm like looking for like pleasure, that's kind of where I go. What about you? What do you like to read? Well, okay, so yes, I like to escape most of the time. Um, I would say like fiction is like the most general i know like that's like encompasses a lot but honestly i could do like historical fiction realistic fiction my mom and sister and i all read similar books and so we i don't know maybe like once every other month or something we like we'll all go buy a book and then we read it and like kind of rotate which will get us through a few months so i would say like we're pretty bigger like decent readers i go through phases for sure sure but here's where this is why i was bringing this up is i feel like there's this like misconception of that People who do a lot in the education world. So like yourself, I think, okay, you have a podcast, you run our podcast network, you've written your own book. 
like, I don't know why, but I just assumed that people who live and breathe education, like they maybe are educators in the classroom or in schools. And then they have like side hustles that they like also live and breathe education in their reading. Like I forget <laughs> that people can have other interests. So I guess I just assume the only thing you read is like education books because I don't know why I thought that. Isn't that weird? I think that's a pretty common perception. Though. I mean, like I do, it's just, I don't in large quantities, you know? Okay. And that's really just in all reading. So like, if I could get a chance to sit down and read, it's only, you know, a few pages here or there right, or, right. Uh, you know, people, I mean, the benefit of having an educational podcast is I get a lot of authors as far as interviews yes. and whatnot. And they send me their, you know, their books or resources, whatnot. So, you know, I tried to do my best to make sure that I, consume as much content as possible but at the same time like life is crazy and busy and so yeah. um, i can only input so much at a time and so uh i think that there is that avenue that always is being input but at the same time mm -hmm. like sometimes i just need to like step away from it <laughs> and then yeah know, it's a good escape to like get into these like dystopian crazy fantasy stories to you know right change it up a little bit but then i also have like business books like super fans you know mm -hmm. i just read that and you know, there's other uh like business type so, so like uh, self-help you know like yes, uh, like the self-help mm -hmm. what was it atomic habits you know that's a great mm -hmm. book um by james clear so like i've i've consumed that content so it's just like there's different things um that i consume that's different than education but it's just kind of like whatever i'm feeling in the mood for at that moment okay i do find though like to kind of piggyback on your point of you know, sometimes we do get it from ever, especially like in our roles now, you know, we mm -hmm. both have stepped away from like the, the physical schools where we would be tied to. Now we work with schools all over, you know, our job yep. looks different, but sometimes it is like, there's just so much, there's so many people out there that are, you know, like writing books, all kinds of different books, whether it's children's books or education books, plus like the books that we know we should read to better ourselves as just like leaders and it is sometimes hard. And so sometimes I do find like I get overwhelmed on my list of what I should read. Like I know these will be really good for me professionally. And I lean on like what I just feel like reading because the time, like you said, the time I sit down and read is so few and far between that it's like, I have 15 minutes. I don't know that I want to like read a self-help that's going to tell me how to be a better person because it might make <laughs> my brain explode. I want to like read about a murder in New York for 15 minutes, you know, like, I don't know. So I do like agree that I think sometimes it's like finding that balance of like, what are you wanting to get out of the time you have to read? Um, yeah, I just think it's interesting. I, we know a ton of people on our network who post on their social media, like the books they're reading all the time. And I'm just always like amazed by how quick people can get through books or how often they read. Cause I just, I'm with you. I'm like, I can get through a couple pages at a time unless a human bothers me and I don't even have that many humans in my house. <laughs> well, and I have a house full of like, like my two oldest kids. Yeah. Actually I'm, all my kids for the most part are like fantastic readers. They've got a book in their hand all the time. Good. Leslie flies through books like on her mm -hmm. Instagram. She's posting all the time, like uh, just insane amount of books that she reads. So like, I, I try not to compare myself to them because like they're just doing you know, they have a lot more time on their hands to, to read and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Leslie does it where she, she, you know, she's up till sometimes she gets invested in a book. She'll be up till like midnight or one in the morning. And I'm like, I can't do that. I'm sorry. No, no, my <laughs> sleep cannot be sacrificed. Yes. <laughs> no. This small amount that I get, I, I value. And yeah. that is more important to me than a reading story. So I think it's healthy to not always stick to just like one piece, like it, mm -hmm. not just all educational, not just all self-help, you know, and, and uh, sometimes we do need a, a, a rest with our brain to go into something else that's maybe a little more entertaining and takes us away from some of the stress of our day. Agreed. Agreed. And I'm also married to a fast reader. We finally, I, I got Matt this summer, a Kindle for his birthday. And at first he was kind of like, this wasn't necessary. We like, we don't typically exchange gifts for anything. So it was like, he got it, you know, from us, like from me and the kids and he was like, am I going to use this? I don't know. And he literally has it with him all the time. And I'm like, remember you said you weren't going to use that, but I think he likes, he can fly through a book and then he doesn't yep. have to wait to go get another one. It's like right there. 
which is awesome. Under. But I, yeah, I try not to compare myself either because I'm significantly slower, but I also preserve like my sleep. I want, I, you know, like I like the morning news. Like there's times he reads <laughs> that I'm like, I have other things I, I'll do, but yeah, it's just, it's a good habit to have. But also if you're not yes. a huge reader, audiobooks has been my new thing this summer. I got into a few of those and I've noticed that certain genres I can listen to better than I can read. Like I, I'm more invested. So if you maybe have like a trip coming up or maybe you have a long commute and we've talked about that on the show, but like mm -hmm. consider after you're done with your teach better today show, maybe listen to an audiobook, and that will be how you consume some of your, your fun reading. If you're not someone that has a lot of time to sit and actually read. So, yep. And it allows you to multitask. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. All right, Josh, we have a pretty good topic. I mean, this is pretty good, but we have a pretty good topic to get into. So are you ready to switch over to that? Yeah, love to. All right, let's do it. Teach Better community. My name is Katie Miglin and I'm with Joshua Stamper on Teach Better Today where we go live every single morning, Monday through Friday on all of our social media platforms. But the bonus then is that these are all turned into podcast episodes where you can find us on all of your podcasting platforms and you can give us a five-star review, leave us a great right, rating, rating review. And oh. uh yeah, do both. And then, um, but yeah, there's so many people who join us on their day to day. So many people will jump in later, whatever you're doing. We are glad you're a part of our community. If you want to stay a little bit more connected, we do encourage you to go over to our private Facebook group where there's lots of educators having great conversation every day. And also where a lot of the comments happen with this feed. So excited to kind of be a part of your day. And we've been talking about reading, we've been talking about books, oh. but you said something that I think we need to fully like dive into. And you said that your wife, Leslie, is a big reader Yep. and you try not to compare yourself to her. And I agree that I do the same thing in my house. I try not to compare myself to my husband, who's a fast reader, but the idea of comparison yeah. is something that is not talked enough about in the world of education. What are your initial thoughts on that? Well, I have fallen into that trap often. So it doesn't matter if you're a teacher and you're viewing someone maybe next door or down the hall from you as far as their relationship with the students or maybe the way that they provide instruction. Maybe if you're an administrator comparing yourself you know, mm -hmm. to other APs, you know, maybe that are moving up into principal positions and you're saying, you know, what are they doing that I'm not, you know, type of thing, or even just on social media, because I think that's yeah. probably the most evident thing, just people outside of education in education that, you know, oh, they're going on this vacation, they're getting these great things. Um, and this came up actually the other day, I was talking with my two oldest uh, who run cross country. So mm -hmm. They have been running, they're in season already. They've been running all summer uh, preparing for this. And one of them got a PR, so personal record. And of course, with cross country, it's never just like one distance. They have multiple distances and they have personal records for each one. They got a PR. But when I got to them, they're extremely sad because they didn't place where they wanted to place. And they started doing the comparison of mm -hmm. where they were in line with the people that they're competing with. And I had to stop them and be like, no, no, no. We're not looking at the place that you you ran in. Let's talk about you and your time. You just beat everything that you've done prior to. Yes. You got a personal record. Like, let's, let's put this in perspective. So instead of doing the comparison game and competing with others, let's just look at the fact that you had extreme growth. And it wasn't even like a personal record by like 0 0.001. It was like significant. It was like 13 okay, that's seconds. That's awesome. That's huge. Yeah, huge. Yeah, like, so let's celebrate that and keep things in perspective. And I think that's a good lesson just in general with a lot of, a lot of 
aspects of life, right? Now that's just sports, but a lot of times we look at everybody else and start to look at their situation, which if we really were to break it down, it's not the same. Everyone is different. Everyone has different experiences. Everything is, is co completely unique to themselves. But when we look at, okay, let's talk about my classroom and my teaching strategies mm -hmm. instead of saying, okay, let's compare myself with the person next door. No, how am I getting better in my instruction each day? What was I like two years ago when I was mm -hmm. teaching? Have I, you know, increased the, the structure that I've got in place? Are my teaching strategies more effective, effective or my assessments better now than they were before? Like there's a lot of components that we can look at and break down so that we might have our own personal record and it has, doesn't have anything to do with the comparison and that trap that we so often put ourselves in of looking at the other person on the other side of the wall mm -hmm. and saying, I'm not as good as them. Well, and it doesn't even just have to be comparing like ourselves. It's also like, I know I was really bad at comparing how a student acted in one classroom yeah. versus my classroom. Like, why do they do work in that person's room? Or why do they seem to have a better relationship? I just had a conversation with an educator a couple weeks ago, and she was really upset because there was a team member who she felt like was connecting with students more than she was. Sure. And it was like, that's so easy to do. It's a natural thing. Like we're not negating it, that it's a true real feeling where we like naturally compare ourselves to others or we compare situations that were in to other people's situations. But the reality is like you said, we can only really compare ourselves with ourselves. And so if you are struggling with relationships with students Think about how did I, what did I do yesterday and how can I be a little bit better today to yep. make those relationships stronger? If you felt like they, you know, the teacher down the hall has these super awesome engaging lessons. Okay. Well, what do you like about the lessons? How can you be a little bit better with what you do? Because sometimes it takes the mirror to remind ourselves like, wait, I also have engaging lessons. My lessons just look different than theirs. Or, you know, I have a strong relationship. Like, no, I'm not talking to them about sports, but we just spent five minutes talking about movies that came out recently. You know, it's like, you're right. The situation looks different with every person because every person offers something different to the conversation or, you know, the whole thing. So only looking internally is so helpful and not something I'm good at even a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's similar to social media. Like everyone that posts mm -hmm. on social media, it's, it's a highlight. It's something yes. that's great. No one's going to like post about their crappy day. Like nobody right. does that. So no. you have to understand, like when you hear about a great relationship with a student, that's a highlight. Like there's other things that are going on in that class that are, are not perfect and need adjustments. And so everyone has their flaws. Mm -hmm. You have to just understand that you may not see it. You know, you right. only may see, see the highlights and, you know, the wonderful things that are going on. Uh, but you have to understand that it's not perfect and, and nobody right. is. But okay. your your mission should always be personally that tomorrow is better than the day prior. And also when you're looking at social media, I think sometimes we get in the jealousy realm of like that comparison leads into jealousy of like, yep. oh, look at their picture perfect family. Look at their picture perfect classroom. When really we should be looking at as celebrating the positive things because yeah, I'm not going to like record my children's meltdowns and post that because that <laughs> nobody else needs to see it. They're all, everyone probably has their own meltdowns happening at their own house. We don't need to share that. But instead looking at like, wow, Josh went camping with his family this weekend and had an awesome weekend. Good for him. That's awesome. Did that mean that there might've been tears from some human? Maybe. Does that Guaranteed. Mean that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Does that mean that people didn't sleep through the night? Maybe Josh is tired when he's posting this. Like, we know all those negative things like are just natural part of life, but just because someone's not posting it doesn't mean they're trying to say like, look at me, my life is perfect. They're just spreading positivity yep. because that's what we need more of in the world. So keep spreading the positivity, keep posting the positive things, but also just remind yourself if you find yourself in that comparison game or in that jealousy trap, like say that's just a piece of their world. They're sharing the positive side doesn't mean that they're perfect and either am I, and that's okay. And I love mm -hmm. I love that you brought this up. I love that, you know, something as simple as comparing your speed of reading is yeah. not something worth comparing to. So now, Josh, I will start texting you pictures of like meltdowns in our house just so that you feel like normal. 
please do because I don't have those ever occur in my right. house. Right, you're because your house is perfect because you guys just like <laughs> you know spend so much time outdoors and you live in Colorado now and everything is like perfect with unicorns and rainbows. So <laughs> that's not true, and I hope everyone watching realizes that. that yeah, yes, neither one of our we houses do, are perfect, guys. We have normal children that are going through all kinds of stuff emotionally and physically. So, yeah. But I won't post that about that. I'm just going to share about all the wonderful views of Colorado and us climbing yeah. mountains. Right. And so then people like me who have are ignoring a meltdown in the background can look at your mountains <laughs> and go, ah, tranquility. Uh, tranquility. <laughs> just like That's my right. backyard. Exactly. Exactly. All right, friends. Well, thank you so much for making us a part of your day. We hope that as you kind of continue on your day, whether you look at social media or pass the teacher in the hall, just remind yourself to just be a little bit better for yourself than you were yesterday. Don't fall into the comparison trap, but instead celebrate the positive things that are happening in your community and in your world. And we look forward to joining you tomorrow morning for another episode. Bye guys. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. 